unreliable. That's what they are, all of them. Now, if it isn't the prodigy, well... Yes, I know. She's already told me everything. Good work. Even though part of her report seemed to be a bit enthusiastic. But I'll leave the judgment to Aranthiel. He wants to talk to you anyway. Seems you've caught his interest. Blazes, I just can't bloody believe it. In the Emporium, the last building on the left side of the temple. Just tell the guard that Aranthiel has asked for you, and they will let you in. Ah yes, before I forget, my dame Lucy has left a token of gratitude for you. It's your choice. Do you want a book, an old map, or a bag of pennies? Very well. Now, get a move on. I'm sure we'll talk again later. The mercenaries. This pigast said that they were after the signet stone, and if they succeed in getting hold of it next time, then the Black Guardian alone knows how to stop the cycle. The cycle? Listening to you talk almost makes me forget that all this fuss here is merely based on some bad dreams you and your Neremese friends had. Oh, the threat is real. Deny it as much as you like, but deep inside, you feel it as much as I do. Teela, this... you're a commander, and a commander doesn't care about feelings, but about facts. You have made this mistake before, Teela, back then in Kira. Natara, all know... the mission will happen. I'm sorry. You have a visitor. So, you are the prodigy everyone is talking about. Interesting. I am Teola Aranthia, son of Laurius I and Grandmaster of the Order, and I'm honored to meet you. What is your name? Yes, and I will come straight to the point. You are here because I believe that you are special. Humanity faces a threat that needs to be stopped, and to achieve this, you are indispensable. Among other things, yes. I do not need to explain to you that the present situation on Vin is chaotic. The wars, the living dead, common people who are losing their minds, to name only the most obvious. What most people are not aware of is the connection between these events. You, however, have encountered it, as have I. I do. And I will explain everything to you. What it means, who we are, and what your part in all of this is. Come, follow me. Maybe you already know who I am. My entire life I served the gods who ruled until their death two years ago. What you probably do not know is that the what one rest? responsible for their death is my son, Narazul Aranthiar. He hated the Lightborn because he believed that they robbed mankind of their right to freedom, so he strived to overthrow them. He found followers, formed an army and declared war on them, and thus on me, a servant of the Lightborn as well. It all ended in a battle thirty years ago, which Narazul won. He killed every single survivor except for me, and locked me in a dungeon on Nerim. I still do not know why he spared me. There were circumstances favoring the development. But it's a long story, which we won't discuss now. Yes, after more than thirty years, when the death of the gods made the magic around the prison disappear. And during my escape in the northern mountains of Nerim, 
I also had them for the first time. The dreams. I always saw the same. Of a light. Heard screaming. And I felt like I was burning up from the inside. And above all, like a veil, there was a of imminence. At first, of course, I dismissed these dreams as the delusion of a man close to death. So I concentrated on making it through the mountains somehow. Two days after my escape, I was completely exhausted, and I would have died if a former acolyte of my son had not found me. Yes, but he did not recognize me and brought me to their headquarters instead, an old monastery in the mountains. The others were aware of my identity, but for whatever reason they did not kill me. Maybe because they thought that the death of the Lightborn had made me insignificant. I do not know. Still, even after my recovery, the dreams continued. At first I doubted my sanity, but after some time I told the leader of the Majors, Constantine, about them said something that I'd never expected. I was not alone. He, as well as many others magically gifted on Vim, dreamed the same dreams. And the more we talked about the matter, the stronger our suspicion grew, which is now turned out to be the truth. The dreams, they come from the same place. They are a shared memory. collective subconscious. Yes, I know that you can feel it too, and probably far more intense than we do. But like you back then, we were not able to make sense of the images. So we went looking for answers in the remains of the civilization that was before us, the Pyrenees. Three things. First, there were many civilizations before us and before the Pyrenees. Maybe hundreds, maybe thousands. Second, the history of each civilization unfolded and still unfolds according to a pattern. They emerge, they blossom, and at some point, at the apex of their existence, they simply disappear without any trace. And third, Everything that has happened in the past years, and which is still happening, indicates that this disappearance lies ahead of us. We are part of an eternal loop, a cycle, and our cycle is approaching its end. one can split them up into episodes which repeat themselves in the very same manner, into patterns. Yes, it does. At first we considered it absurd, as probably you do at this moment. But there came a moment when we simply could not deny it anymore. We began to study the history of the Pyrenees more intensely, and the parallels were extraordinary. In its early days, the Pyrenean Empire was split up by a disaster, just like Vin was split up by the Starfall after the reign of the Eterna. Also, the Pyrenees had a ruling caste who declared themselves gods after the catastrophe. The two castes of the Sun Priest. They, too, ruled until they were overthrown. This overthrowing was followed by an outbreak of wars and chaos. And then, just like that, the Pyrenees ceased to exist. They knew it was imminent, but they could not prevent it. They called this event the Cleansing. They tried, but they failed. Who knows why? 
Maybe they found out too late, or maybe they were too weak. That is the question we need to find an answer to. The end was not violent, at least not in a sense as we know it. There was no natural disaster, no magical explosion, no plague. Even though there was war in the Pyrrhean Empire before its ruin, when the cleansing happened, it was as if all living beings simply fell down and died. It is ghastly. Well, this is the reason why we need your help. Not only episodes of history recur within every cycle, characters do as well. Yes, the Pyrians call them the Emissaries. They emerge very shortly before the cleansing occurs, like a law of nature, an answer to the Red Madness. And I am one of them, as are you. While I take on the role of the ruler, you take on the role of the prophet. It's just a description. Call it what you will. But without doubt, it is the truth. Your story matches the descriptions perfectly. I do not know. Firespark the Mage has told me your story. And even though your fate is tragic, unlike me, you were insignificant before your change. So maybe everyone can become an emissary, or we simply have not understood the pattern yet. No, as I already said, the emissaries simply appear at the beginning of the end, like pieces on a chessboard. We are determined by our skills. How and to what end we use them is our choice. Yes, former enemies or not, both sides have understood the magnitude of the threat. The magical knowledge of Narazul's former mages is vast, as is the power of the Holy Order. Even though not all of the Keepers agree, as you probably have already noted yourself. On the one hand, your power. You carry the potential to master any skill within a fraction of the usual time needed. I assume you have already realized this. On the other hand, your ability to look into the past, and therefore into the future. Your visions are a window into the past, and as every cycle is based on the same events, it is a window into the future as well. You can feel the thread this world is woven with, and because of that, you can see things that have happened, and thus will happen again. This gift makes you indispensable to us, and it is why I want your help. That is the wrong question. The correct question is, what alternative do we have? To wait and die? If it is wealth and power you seek, you will have it. The Order has enough of both. Good. However, there's one more thing before the actual work begins. I want you to join our Order, and to do so you have to pass a test, a trial. It is. Whatever you think about our story, we are the only faction that is strong enough to oppose the cycle. If you want to be part of our mission, you need to have access to our knowledge and resources. There will be voices in the Order speaking against your admission, as they are speaking against the presence of the Neremes Mages. Consider it an honor or a necessity. It is up to you. It is the trial the novices have to pass in order to be exalted to the role of a keeper. Only the best students of the Squala are allowed admission, and even though you have not been a novice, I want you to take it too. 
At this very moment, two novices are on their way to the testing grounds. I have informed them about your arrival. I had a hunch. Let us leave it at that. At the border to the heartland, near the Whisper Wood. They will be waiting for you there. Take the Myred, talk to Signet Master Bartar, and hand him this package. And then follow his orders. Ah, one more thing. It might be self-evident, but keep your knowledge about the death of the Lightborn to yourself. I do not believe you can do any real harm. But in the worst case, path-abiding people will consider you a heretic. After the cycle has been stopped, we will deliberate upon how we deal with the matter. If and how we tell our people about it. But not now, that is for sure. Now, leave. The sooner we can dispense with this formality, the better.